Thanks for joining us to talk about procedural memory, how to crave memory exercise by getting it into your procedural memory. This is one of the most powerful things you can do. And you know, I'm always amazed how that I just find myself at the gym. I don't want to go, but yet I'm there. Same thing with memory training. I just find myself sitting and reciting all this Sanskrit from memory, and it just seems to happen on autopilot. And the question is, why? Well, I think it has everything to do with procedural memory. And so if you're struggling with getting habits started and showing up consistently, and if you wish that you could actually learn a skill that you are able to use effortlessly and in a way that is fun and you don't feel any pain or struggle or, oh, I wish I was doing something else about it, but you're just there, you're just in the zone, I think it has everything to do with procedural memory or at least a whole lot to do with it. And I think it can be trained. And I know it can be trained because there are a lot of things that I do all the time that wouldn't be possible if I had uh, my mind telling me how much hard work it was, etc., etc. So when it comes to memory exercise, it's now, you know, closer to three years than it is 2.5 years that I've shown up every day to recite mountains of Sanskrit from my head from my memory. And this is the biggest memory exercise you could ever get. And that's on top of finding time to memorize cards, etc, etc. So it's really, really important. And it's very, very clear to me that this is a procedure that happens on autopilot, just without even me having to think about it. I just find myself sitting there doing this, doing the work. And it's because of procedure. The procedure itself has been memorized to the point that it seems to just guide the rest of the activities. Likewise with the gym. Even after the gym today, I didn't really feel like doing my post-gym walk, and yet I still found myself doing it and actually enjoying it without any kind of pain or suffering or anything like that. Hey, Magnetic Memorizers, this is Anthony Metivier from MagneticMemoryMethod.com. If you want to improve your memory, get started now by subscribing to this channel and enabling notifications so you don't miss a thing our community releases about using memory techniques like the Memory Palace to learn and remember anything in ways that are fast, easy, effective, and fun. And oh, for the love of the greatest tradition known to humanity, hit thumbs up for memory training. How do you get that for memory training, for memory exercise, so that you don't have any issues with it, you actually crave it. You wake up and you go, wow, I wish I could memorize something new today. And you make the time for it because you have evolved a strong procedural memory, one that operates even without you needing it, needing to be involved because your ego it doesn't have any power over it. And the whining and the crying and the, oh, it's so hard, just has no power. But let's start with what is this procedural memory uh, all about? Now, Wikipedia is not the be-all and the end-all of these things, but might as well start somewhere, right? And it's fast and easy to get some things going here. Procedural memory, we are told, is a type of implicit memory and long-term memory which aids the performance of particular types of task without conscious awareness of these previous experiences. Procedural memory guides the processes we perform and most frequently resides below the level of conscious awareness. So this is really, really important because as I say, there are these experiences I have, and I think we all have them, where you just are on autopilot showing up somewhere and doing stuff. Maybe it's a negative thing. I'm talking about all the positive stuff where I just am doing my meditation and like, wow, I'm doing my meditation. Didn't even think about it. Or I'm at the gym, uh, etc. Or I'm writing, doing my daily writing stuff and it's just Whoa, you know, wow, amazing. It just happens on autopilot. But there's the negative as well, where you just find yourself at the fridge guzzling down endless um, junk food or whatever. And I used to have the same experience with beer. I'd be like, oh, it's 2 a.m. and I'm at a bar and I need to throw up again. Like it just happens on autopilot, right? So it, it has a dark side and it's below the level of conscious awareness. And I'm sure glad I got rid of that being at the bars uh, stuff because not good, not good for your memory, not good for anything. But the idea here is, is that we can also make it conscious. We can make it conscious to a certain extent and we need to learn about it. So they say that memory that is involved in procedural memory is stored first in the motor cortex. And that kind of makes sense given the nature of a lot of these procedural tasks that we would do. So 
we'll talk about what is what some of the things are that are involved in procedural memory uh, in a minute. But imagine it starts in the motor cortex, that part of the brain there, and then it's moved to the cerebellum. And this is really, really interesting because this is now deeper in the brain and more animal. And that's part of what gets you that effect of just things happening on autopilot without any thoughts involved, right? Because it becomes part of this animal and automatic amount. And so if we can link that animal and automatic to positive behaviors like memory exercise, then it will start to happen on autopilot. And it'll be deep, deep, deep down, deep, deep, deep down. And what's so interesting about this is that I think too, that if you link it to the right kind of content or semantic material, then it's going to have even more implications for the overall improvement of what you're doing in life. As we saw there in the definition, the first opening salvo of definitions, it has something to do with implicit memory and long-term memory. So let's look at this. Within long-term memory, it is said to, to be the memory of knowing how to do things. So speaking, bicycling, cooking, typing, piano, climbing stairs. And if you've seen some of the, the uh, new record-breaking video footage of people memorizing cards in less than 13 seconds now, less than 13 seconds, 52 cards, there's obviously some procedural memory going on there. It's just bang, done, right? And a huge part of breaking the records of card memorization has less to do with the actual techniques as it has to do with the hand moving fast enough, right? In order to break those records. I would argue that if you're doing anything with index cards to memorize. This is also going to tap into your procedural memory because the procedure of using memory techniques is itself like mental walking. It will tap into your spatial memory. The very process of making sure that you make memory palaces correctly in a well-formed manner will be a procedure not unlike climbing stairs. And so one of the number one problems that people have is, well, I don't understand the memory palace technique yet. It's not working for me, etc. I ask, how many did you make? Uh, one. Well, you don't have the procedure down yet. You can't. That would be like saying, well, I didn't learn how to walk, climb stairs because I gave up after the first one was too hard. <laughs> you know, you've got to develop the procedure. You really need to know how to do it. And everything that we see involved in procedural memory is a thing that lends itself to having been repeated, right? So it's very, very important. Speaking, bicycling, cooking, typing, playing the piano, guitar for that matter, climbing stairs, etc. So this is one of the reasons why in the world of memory training, I often say, just don't overthink it, just, just do it. And that can be unhelpful to certain people because they don't, they don't, no, how do you just do something that you don't understand? Well, you just don't understand it. You, you, you don't try to understand it. You don't worry about understanding it. You just follow some steps and some directions. And they're, they're, they don't need understanding as such. You come to understand it by doing. And that's partly because there is a strong emphasis just on procedure, just on following steps. It's very much like fishing in that way. You don't really have to understand physics. You don't under, have to understand uh, anything about the way that fi the brains of fish work. Can it help you? Well, yes, it, it, at some level it certainly can. But the name of the game is putting worms on hooks, having some sort of devices there maybe to make it float in a particular way or go down deeper, uh, weighted in this and that way. Maybe, maybe not. And then casting and then waiting for the feeling and then reeling it in, right? There's not a whole lot to be understood there. And yet, if you could just get yourself to follow those steps, there's a whole world of understanding that can open up. And then after you know how to do that stuff, you can think about the brains of fish, what they're thinking, what their temperature preferences are at certain times of day, etc. But you're never going to get into that world in any meaningful way if you can't just get around the idea that worms go on hooks, hooks go in water, and then when you feel a pull, you start to roll in your reel. Very, very simple. And uh, so I don't know how to help all the people in the world, but one of the things that we just got to wrap around uh, our heads around is that understanding can get in the way of 
performing this unconsciously, getting to the point where you just without thinking, oh, wow, I need a memory palace. Bang, it's drawn in just a couple of seconds. And then you're using it like that. Bam. Very, very important. And you can develop that, but sometimes you just got to get out of your own way. If you haven't taken the free course yet that gets you into the full family, just follow the link in the description below or on the screen, and I'll send you my free memory improvement worksheets and video course. Together, we'll unlock your natural ability to learn and remember anything fast. Well, magnetic friends, thanks as always for the view. If you're not yet subscribed, please join us. And for the love of the great memory tradition, hit that thumbs up and keep the conversation going in the discussion area below. Oh, and never forget, keep yourself magnetic.